make your day richer than it was before. Got some good times knocking upon your front door. It's the Richard Wilmore Show. No, oh. sorry, but you are my oh. first good camera Ooh. interview, so Hi. hopefully we'll look good and sound good now with the microphones on. I don't know. I'm honored. I'm honored regardless. Well, it's for your birthday. It's your birthday. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. This is what I always wanted. <laughs> A good interview. Yay. Um, do you really talk about, you don't really talk about your kids in your act or anything, do you? Not so much. I, I have a, a bit about uh, my daughter. Uh, dis uh, discovering the non-existence of Santa Claus, mm. you know. Uh, outside of that, yeah, I don't, I don't talk about them very much. I, I, it's one of those things that I've, I've felt that they didn't ask to be the children of a comedian, so I don't really put them in my act too much. On the podcast, I talk about them a lot on the podcast mm. for, uh, for sure, but not so much in my act. And so many people do it, and so I'd, I'd like to give them their, their privacy, you know. How long have you been doing stand-up? See, that's a tough question, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and, and here's why, because I started in sketch mm -hmm. uh, with Comedia Gogo in 2002, and then I want to say around 2004, 2005, I did a duo uh, called Larry and Regan, and we were you know, fairly successful uh, in, uh, in, in Texas, and then um, I have my Tony Clifton. Uh, if you're an Andy Kaufman fan, I hope you get the reference. Uh, uh -huh. My uncle, Jesus, who farted Mendoza, who won third place in Funniest Person in South Texas. And, oh, I'm sorry, runner-up. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving him enough credit. And then I started doing solo stand-up in 2010, so nine years. Okay. But I know, it's a complicated question for me. Because because you've done a lot. Yes. 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 And you've, yeah. you've done many different types of it, I suppose. The, the types of comedy. That's, yes. that's one of the, my little... I have, you know, a few pet peeves, and one of my pet peeves is how long have you been doing comedy? And the, the real question is how long have you been doing individual stand-up comedy? And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, those are two different questions. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> when did you realize you were funny? Uh, when I was little, when I was a kid. You know, um, I uh, got picked on, you know, and uh, I was real quiet and stuff, and I would make my family laugh. My family, they're all, they're all, they're all hoots. They're all really mean. That's why I can do roast battles very well. They're very mean, <laughs> spirited uh, jokesters, and so uh, yeah, I was raised by my grandma, and I really enjoyed making her laugh and you know goofing off in front of the TV, mimicking Little Richard when he did Taco Bell commercials. I don't know how old you uh -huh. are, but yeah, when Little Richard. I'll be thirty-five. Had... Okay, so yeah. you might remember yeah. the Little Richard yeah. Taco Bell yeah. commercial. Eight, uh, seventy-nine, eighty-nine, ninety-nine. Yeah, I used to do that for my grandma, and so yeah, it's. Uh, since then, and and funny enough, a coworker of mine asked me, you know, when did you know you wanted to do comedy? I was like, oh, I was a, I was a child. I was watching Nick at Night, watching Laughing and Saturday Night Live, and yeah, that's when I was a kid. When um, when did you start the podcast? I want to talk about the podcast. Sure, it's called Public Access A X I S. Uh, my uh, my buddies Justin Regan, uh, we started Comedia Go Go back in two thousand two. We started the podcast in two thousand. <laughs> We've been doing it quite a few before years. Before podcasts were a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Before they were a thing. Podbean back uh -huh. in those days. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we started a Public Access, which was the name of a festival that we had uh, done at the Cameo Theater back mm -hmm. in the day. And um, it was also the name of our Public Access show that we had um, that, you know, uh, there's Best Of, there's San Antonio Current Best Of. We won Best Public Access Show back when that was a category. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so the podcast, it started off, you know, like, we wanted it to be different because there's a lot of comedy podcasts out there. There's a lot of, you know, so how'd you get your start? All that, all that, all that sort of stuff. But 
we f- we feel that our fan base already knows those answers, you know, to, to the people that, you know, were our guests. So we do like a topic based question. We, we do like an introduction. Then we have three topics. My buddy Jess is really big into uh, video games and movies and pop culture. So it's called, yeah, I'm looking at that, which is a, is basically a review, like a blog of stuff. Uh, mine's called Dad's Cornered. Uh, cornered. Uh, and it's, it's really, I, I talk about the kids like I was telling you, but it, it, it really is just a intro to nostalgia and talking about when you were growing up, coming of age type of questions. And then my buddy Regan, you know, he's a nerd and his uh, segment's called Hey, That's Not Funny. So he talks about science and politics and stuff. And so uh, it's been a lot of fun. We, we started doing them live at the Blind Tiger every third Friday. And uh, July uh, 12th, uh, come out to the Blind Tiger. We, we switched dates. So come out to the Blind Tiger July 12th if you can make it. That's uh, this uh, week. Yeah, it is this week. This Friday. Yes. So um, it's free. It's fun. We have the audience come and answer the questions. You know, we have a, our Facebook Happy Campers group, if you look that up, uh, where people who are introverts that don't like to go outside, gorephobics, you know, <laughs> people that are allergic to cats, they can... <laughs> They can answer the questions, you know, online, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. You should come. You should come out. Right, I'm not busy on the 12th, which is this week. Which is this, this very week. What did you do for your birthday? What did I do for my yeah. birthday? Oh man, you had so much fun. I it's had so much fun, and since this birthday. is not pre-recorded, no. uh, I will just let me just put it this way: I had a great time. Good. I mean, it was yesterday, so I'm glad. Yeah, um, I was in uh, Fort Worth, uh, the fifth and the sixth, opening for JY Cotton and Hyenas. Uh, he likes to say co-headlining, I'm opening for him. Um, and I didn't die on my <laughs> way out. <laughs> so this isn't going to be a post, uh, how do you say it? Post. Post of Mahominus? What did yeah, Heath Ledger win? What got yeah, Oscar did he win? Post. He. Post of his. Post Dominus? He won't be dead. Okay. Hopefully. Because this is obviously. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, he might. He walks in and he goes, wait, do you have cats? <laughs> And then he walked around. Isn't that crazy how I immediately yeah. knew that? Yeah, yeah. Because I look like a crazy cat lady. No, you don't look oh. It's just, there's there's a sixth sense that I have because of how allergic I am to cats. He walked right back out and was like, I'll be right back. And then he went down on the inhaler. So that's pretty That's cool. right. I, I know my body. That's good. It's very important. What do you have uh, coming up besides the 12th? The 12th? Uh, recording. Uh, uh, August 2nd. I'm really excited yes. because uh, we are going to be doing the summer dinner party and comedy uh, show uh, over at the veranda. Uh, uh, that's in San Antonio. It's it's uh, it's going. Uh, proceeds are going to go to uh, Rivers Rainbows, uh, uh, which is uh, go, which helps um, with research on uh, childhood cancers and how to uh, prevent um, children get adult levels of chemotherapy, and a lot of the times uh, their uh, illnesses and, and uh, side effects are from the chemo, not necessarily the cancer themselves. So Rivers Rainbows is dedicated to my buddy River Lawrence, who uh, passed away, uh, and uh, he's a little boy, inspiration of mine, and it's for him, and it's, a, it's going for a good cause, so uh, that's going to be August 2nd. Uh, August 3rd, follow me at Larry Garza Comedy, and there's something in the works I'm not allowed to talk about, which is uh, actually pretty cool. I'm going to be in uh, Laredo on August 8th, and uh, November... Uh, 28th and 29th, the last Friday and Saturday of November, I'm going to be at the Velveeta Room in Austin. I'm going to be headlining there, so be there, be squared. Do you have a, a favorite place to go to do comedy? Oh my like goodness. That you love? The Blind Tiger. The Blind yeah. Tiger is my absolute favorite. That that place, you know, I, uh, it's, a, it's a comedy collective, you know, comedians run it. I, I, I helped, you know, when it, when it started out, and I got to tell you, that that really it, it's a place for aud- audiences who want to see comedy. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch. There's karaoke upstairs. There's people that want to go to a bar upstairs. But if you want to see actual comedy, not be bothered by that sort of stuff, the Blind Tiger's there, and it's really helped my act. You know, we do four minute sets. You know, we none of us really have egos, and we're able to really chop down and and make our acts. Uh, Precise TV ready, you know. It's 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 made me do more than just the brown face that I used to do when I started. It's what I call it, kind of like beaner comedy in San Antonio, and I've I've been able to do 
I've been able to find my voice there. So the Blind Tiger is definitely my favorite. How do you think um, comedy in San Antonio is doing? Is like, doing? Yeah. I, I think I think I've told this to everyone, but uh, I'm shocked at the amount of talent in all the different ways in San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. Like we have great comedians, we have great musicians, Absolutely. great like great actors. Yeah. It's so. And once they get really good, they move to Austin. I know. That's what happens. <laughs> and it's because of the people. Because of you people that are afraid to leave your houses. Leave your house, man. Come come and check a show out. I know. We were, I was talking to someone about bringing the show to their venue, and they're like, unless you're the Spurs or Fiesta, it's so hard to sell a ticket to something. You know, I've, I've, I've been doing shows uh, for 17 years, and I still haven't figured out how to get San Antonio out. If it's a free show, they're like, oh, it's probably not worth it. Mm -hmm. If it's ten bucks, they're like, I don't know who this is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know what the, the fun price is for those of you know, the comedians watching? Sixteen dollars. Charge sixteen bucks. I don't know why it works. You, you, you'll sell a lot of tickets at sixteen bucks for some reason, or thirteen. It's weird. But um, comedy, I don't know, man. It's uh, it means a lot to me. I've been trying very hard with Comedia Gogo -Go to make San Antonio more than just the you know Mexicans be like type of comedy and, and I think we've succeeded somewhat in that even though we contribute to it a little bit um, and that mixed with the blind tiger it's 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 a, a safe haven from the toxicity that has grown in, in this city with with the comedy and I I have no uh, regrets in, in saying that I mean the the scene is so um, it's hard it's hard when it's hard when it's difficult to get work in other cities when you say you're from San Antonio. And I'm a stubborn guy, and I'm proud to be from San Antonio. And I don't like that. I don't like that. You know, uh, a club will second guess my humor because I'm from San Antonio. I wrote an article in the Current about being a San Antonio comedian, and uh, yeah, there's too many bar shows. There's too many. Uh, uh, comedians that do crowd work that open up for hecklers to you know have free reign on people. There's a you know there, San Antonio is. I, I compare the city to a, like a drunk father. You know I have a codependent relationship with this city, and so you know I want to see it do well, but I get so upset <laughs> and I get so angry, and I can talk bad about it. But as soon as someone else. You're not allowed to talk. Yeah. No, no this one. Is my dad. This is my dad. Mm -hmm. You don't talk to him. You don't make fun of him. I'll take care of him. Yes, he's embarrassing. Yes, he messed himself. Because <laughs> it's April. In front of the family. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's the middle of April. He usually messes himself <laughs> in front of kids. But that's my dad, and I'm gonna take care of him. That's how I feel about San Antonio. That's a that's a loaded question, my friend. But I'm really passionate. I really want to turn it around. I really, really do. We're gonna take a break. Oh, because I'm so heated. And yes, I got an ice cube. And I want you to think of three words when we come back, three words to describe yourself. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Fat, funny, ugly. So the, <laughs> the Richard Wilmore Show. Stacy and in coaching, the world needs your flavor of magic. You should have called for us. You really were in the <laughs> I have my, my, my French shirt. I have my French shirt. Uh, we're back with Larry. Uh, so three words. That describe me? Yeah, that describe you. Um, funny, awkward dad. Okay. Uh, we already talked about funny. Yeah. Why are you awkward? I have very odd self-esteem. It's, you know, I, I don't consider myself anything. I don't consider myself anybody. And I have this really odd, like, uh, anxiety of not remembering if I've met somebody or not, so I tend to introduce myself multiple times, and um, my anxiety kind of takes the best of me a lot, and so I'm just sitting there looking as awkward as I can going, so they say, hey, how's it going? Or, hi, I'm Larry, or it's great to see you, and so normally I'll have my wife or a, a close friends know the drill. It's like, hey, Hey, uh, this is my buddy Richard, and then the rule is, hi, what's your name? Uh -huh. Like, if we become friends and I say that, then you're like, hey, what's your name? So then I can get, you know, oh, hey, I'm Chris. My buddy Chris from, like, you know, from 
back in the day. I'm like, Chris, how's it going? You know, because I will f- totally forget who you are. I'm horrible with names. I'm pretty good with faces. Yeah. But I can never, like, I know we met before. Yeah. But I don't know where we met or how we met. I promise it'll happen to us, and I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's okay. Because <laughs> uh, we'll both be like, wait. Yeah. I literally did that to someone. I saw a bartender was on my show. He's in a band. Yeah. He's on my show. And I was like, where, where you are you on my show? Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh my god, Richard. I couldn't fill the life of me yeah. remember his name. I was like, god. oh, my man. So good, my oh, man. Oh, oh god. sweetheart. And you just do like the hug, and you're like, oh, so good to see you again. How have you been doing, mm-hmm. man? What was the last thing we yeah. talked about? <laughs> he was like, oh my god, thank you so much for having me on the show. I was like, oh. oh. Oh, my, my pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> Chick fil A employee, yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about. Uh, we, we have. I want. Okay, here's my question. I work for. Uh, with a nonprofit that oh. does uh, creative arts with can- adult cancer patients. Oh, wow, okay. And I know your Wonderful. history with that. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that yet. Yeah, I'm yeah, very open. I would love to yeah, hear yeah. about that and have people hear about that because I love sure. that you sort of mix jokes in about it. Absolutely, yeah. And um, I want to talk about how creative arts and how that has helped you. Sure. So I have this Seven little, little saying, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, so uh, this album that I've been sitting on for about a year and a half uh, is called Die Laughing. And I was going to die. I had uh, stage four uh, renal cell carcinoma. Uh, it was metastatic. So it's kidney cancer that moved to my lungs, to my brain. I have a joke. You can see it on the album. Um, about that, but yeah, I was uh, having seizures. Uh, I still have the tumor in my brain. I take seizure medicine every night, anti-seizure medicine, not seizure. <laughs> like I don't induce seizures. seizures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was really important for me to write because, uh, it, and, that, and that's also kind of like a layered uh, answer because obviously I'm just sitting around doing nothing, right? And it's occupying my time. It was good brain exercise because I did have severe brain damage. Uh, But it's also taking the ability to read and write for granted because where my tumor is, um, I couldn't read. Like I just lost the ability to read. I couldn't speak when I uh, I was about to have a seizure, like I couldn't form words. Inside my head, I was fine. I could think clearly, but I just couldn't speak. I couldn't uh, I, I compare it to Russian. Have you ever seen Russian text? Yeah. It, like it looks like you should know how to read it, but you just but you can't. But you can't. Yeah. That's how words would turn. And so once um, I found the right medication, uh, and, and shout out to you know uh, UT Health uh, for bringing me back to life, and just being s- literally scared to death, um, I just started really hyper focusing on my act, on my comedy, on laughing at it because if I was going to leave my little stamp on the world, I wanted to like big middle finger to cancer. Mm-hmm. And people say it all the time, the F cancer thing, but like no, really, like the disease is a is a terrible, terrible, awful disease that happens to good people, to bad people, to children, to the elderly, and you it know, it's not discriminating. It doesn't, and so I say laugh at it laugh at it, make fun of it, you know, it's, it's, the people that get offended about cancer jokes are people that have never had cancer, huh. and the people that have had cancer or who have cancer think it's hilarious, so I like to consider myself an advocate for, for cancer patients because, you know, it, it, it's our disease, you know, you don't have the right to tell us what we can or can't laugh at, so that's why it's important, and, and God bless you for, for doing that, it's just to, so people don't lose hope, because you can really get into a dark place when when death's like when death is nigh, you know, you can just, you know, wanna just be at home. I was scared for a, a few months, uh, once I started having seizures of going anywhere and I would just lock myself in, in my room and just I couldn't even watch TV because I didn't understand what was going on. I would just lay there and just be sad, you know, and I couldn't let my kids see me like that and I couldn't do that to myself and here I am. So how has writing and getting back into comedy kind of helped you deal with it? I'm at a, I'm at a point now um, that I don't do the cancer material anymore, and not because 
I don't want to, or you know that whole I don't want to be the cancer comic thing. It's uh, my buddy Ray Lopez. He he passed away, not from cancer, but he he had, he had passed away. He was a big guy, and he he he. One of my favorite quotes of his was. Um, I'm a comedian who's fat, I'm not a fat comedian. Because he didn't do jokes about being fat. And so now, you know, I'm a comedian who's had cancer, not a cancer comedian. So I have the jokes in my pocket. If we're going to, you know, the um, the charity that we're working for, I'll pull the jokes out and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm working on some new material, and so none of it has to do with the cancer stuff. It became, it started to become kind of like the, the Mexican thing for me, kind of like a crutch, kind of like an easy, easy joke. So. Who uh, in San Antonio, or I guess anywhere who might be watching this, do you love? Uh, what comics do you love? So um, people need to be paying attention to. So uh, Jay White Cotton has been my mentor. I know he's been mentioned on your show before, uh, but you know, probably means he needs to come on my show. Yeah, yeah. And then we have does. all of you in the audience. Sure. Be like a cute little. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, me and Jay are best friends, uh, and we came up together. You know, he actually—it's it, funny because. He used to open up for Comedia Go Go, and we did our sketch shows at the Sam's Burger Joint. And he he's thanked us, you know, for giving him the ability because we actually had a fan base, and that was something that the uh, standups at the time weren't used to. They they weren't used to the same crowd uh, every month, so they would do the same jokes, and it was like a punk rock kind of crowd. So they would yell out their punchlines, mm -hmm. and so the the comics would get upset. So uh, White Cotton took it upon himself to write new material every month before our show, and so people became big fans of his. He would do like 15, 20 minutes up front. We do our like two hour shows or whatever. Um, there are marathons, but no people stuck around. And so uh, White Cotton opening for us, and then you know now me opening up for him, you know, is a, a big deal. Uh, Raymond Ort does the same thing. You know, he's out in the valley. Um, I, I remember when he first started, he opened up for me and Regan and we did the duo thing down in McAllen and now he's huge. Now he's like, he sells out festivals and theaters and I'm really, really proud of him. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, Tori Poole. Uh, I am a, uh, a big fan of uh, George Anthony. You know, he's he's really funny. Uh, Josh Kwaza, I think, has really come up a lot. Um, and then in, and in the weirdos. The, the, you know, if you're a fan of, of, of weird comedy, you know, uh, pay attention to Travis Reyes, uh, to Kenny Van, uh, you know, uh, Chris Breckle. He's not really weird, but he's he's really really funny. And uh, there's there's so many there's so many good comics that come out of of San Antonio and Austin, you know, and, and the Valley, and, and you know, and you, they need to be paid attention to Aaron or Yemper out of Dallas, like he's he's done some really cool stuff and, and if you haven't heard of Aaron or Amper, I highly recommend looking him up. So I can I can go on. There's I have so many friends just scroll. So just fans on. Yeah. Just like credits. The this is a credits man. Yeah. And I and I forgot you. You're listening, you're like, oh why didn't Larry mention me? I was put on the spot. Don't get your feelings here. You're gonna message me. It's not nothing personal. Man. He's we, almost having an asthma attack. Yeah That's we need we'll on. just we need to hang out more. That's why I didn't mention. It. Sorry, um, you didn't have to use your inhaler once. Yeah. So I'm glad. Makes me feel better. Thank you. Um, is there anything that you want to talk about before I get you out of here to go home <laughs> and away from the cats? No, I want I want you to ask me questions. Don't worry, I'm fine. Okay. I'm not gonna die. Uh, I might die. But it would be unrelated. But it's okay, and it's also on film. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> well, then it would go viral. That's true. Yeah, you, finally you people can put it watch on my show on, on the Y and C. Yes. Yeah. In that <laughs> case, I'm not, I'm not let them out. Let's get some dander on your That's face. That's right. Uh, no, I just I want the world to know who Comedia Agogo is. Like even my my entire stand-up career, you know, anytime I do a big show, I wear my Comedia Agogo shirt. It's you know they're they're my Wu Tang. You know, um, I'm really proud of the films we've made. You can go to our YouTube channel, check out our video sketches, our short films. We want we've won awards nationally and stuff like that. And you know, I want I want to scream at the top of the mountains that Comedia Go Go rules. So I'm very proud to be a part of that. Do you think it's changed? I keep forgetting to ask them. I'm like, there's so much access to stand up 
comedy now with Netflix, like and oh, all, it all happens. oversaturation to the so? max. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Like people ask me, like you know, so who are your inspirations? You know, and I say HBO because HBO had Mr. Show with Bob and David. They had Rodney Dangerfield, Young Comedian Special. You know, the uh, Aspen Comedy Festival or uh, Montreal Comedy Festival, and that's that's where I got all my stand-up from was from HBO and then they had the half hour comedy hours and Bill Hicks's specials and stuff and um, that's kind of having one place to, to view stand-up and even in, in like short bursts so then you can see they're longer I think is really important I think showcases are important open mics you can't judge a scene based on their open mics any psychopath can get on an open mic stage and for you to judge our scene on open mics, shame on you. Um, but yeah, showcases are really important to give people kind of a taste of the comedian. And then you, as an audience member, should follow them. And then when they have their bigger special, their longer shows, then you know you go check them out and support them and see what they have to offer. So I forgot what the question was, but uh, the question, <laughs> oversaturation. Yes, the yeah. question was Netflix, what YouTube, access Hulu, to it Funny or Die. All that sort of stuff. This anyone could be famous, and the the fact of the matter is, is you know, ha having a fourteen year old daughter, she loves vines, you know, she loves you so YouTubers. The, the, it's it's a thing, I guess. The way like you know, someone who watches old films is a thing. Oh. They they watch these vine compilations on on compilations. They watch these vine compilations on YouTube, and they're just dumb, you know. And and they're funny, you know, for for what it is. But that's what they find humorous in these YouTubers that were Vine stars, you know, are, are you know, selling out the Majestic and the Empire Theater and they're not even really doing an act. But at the same time, if you go back to the 80s and the way stand-up was compared to the way it is now, they would probably see us as like, you know, wasting time on stage. So who's, I'm just probably being an old finicky like, that's not comedy and blah, blah, blah. Because I've tried to show her stand-up. I've tried to show her Dimitri Martin and stuff like that because she is, you know, kind of a uh, artsy fartsy little girl and she's just not into it. Huh. Not into it. It's too long. It needs to be six seconds. Snaps. Ten seconds. So the attention span has become. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. I because I have a right to like I watch those specials on Netflix all the time yeah. like, just to see it. And someone like, how did you get a Netflix special? Managers. Yeah. Yeah, some people that they, they they have some entitlement based on tenure, and that's not an important thing. Tenure isn't an important thing. You know, I I would you know I don't care how long you've been doing stand up. If you're funny and you have a natural talent and you appreciate the art form, like be famous, go do your thing. You know, I have no ego when it comes to tenure. You know, so um, it's a um, so not, it's, an, it's an odd thing, the, the way things are going. There's, there's too much. Mm -hmm. There's too much. And there's the ability to be frauds. Hustlers get, I mean, and that's been since, that's show business. Yeah. You know, but you can buy your followers, you can buy your clicks, you can buy your likes, and the whole illusion of, of fame is a real thing. And when they go on stage and they suck, then the audience is like, stand-up sucks, mm -hmm. and they leave, and they're like, and... Me, who can't afford to buy followers and is not willing to because of that whole integrity problem. Uh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you, yeah. Yeah, I'm not selling out theaters because, you know, I'm not buying ads. I'm not monetizing my views. I'm also lazy. I just, it's hard to do everything by yourself. Yeah. I just read an article about someone, um, like some Instagram famous person, whatever, who has a gazillion followers right. who did some... They were selling a T-shirt for something, and they had however many however many millions of followers, and they sold six T-shirts. Wow! Like, yeah, yeah, it proved that their followers yeah. are real followers. I mean, yeah, right. That's it. It, but on the flip, there was that GoFundMe for potato salad that raised like six million dollars or I whatever. Don't get, yeah, I don't understand. It's all fake. People it's all it's the, it's the Koch brothers, man. They <laughs> own everything. Like, you know. I try to tell my daughter, because I'm not that much of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm like, all those YouTubers that you like, they're in studios. They're yeah. in Los Angeles, and it's a studio to make look like a, an apartment. It's just a studio, dude. 
Just like this is a studio made to mm -hmm. look we are like an in, apartment. We are in Burbank, California yes. right now. Just that's why it's a lot of fucking hot here. Um, <laughs> oh, you cussed. I was trying not sorry. to cuss. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, Tori did that, and then I put fireworks in her mouth. <laughs> that was else. the first time she's had fireworks <laughs> in her mouth. Didn't know what else to do. We're going to take a selfie, because I bought this, so I feel like I'm going to use Ooh, it. A selfie stick or an iPhone? Both. <laughs> Neither of which I know how to use. <laughs> and I think we're almost out of... See, this is what it does. This is what happens when you buy stuff at the dollar store. This is our... But... Okay. Things are happening. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about before... While I figure this out? You, uh... Nothing? Say it again? Anything. What do you... What do you... Want to tell them before we head out? Because I think the timer's almost up. I always take this picture. Okay, ready? Oh, uh -huh. Yeah. It's perfect. You're hilarious. Oh, go. Cool. Thank you. Do you want to save the camera, or are you out of like memory, dude? No, I think we're just. We would have to take a break. Okay. Do you want to take a break? I'm down to take a break. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna be right back more with Larry after this break. After these messages, these we'll messages. be right back. <laughs> are you an overpacker? A travel capsule wardrobe will help you eliminate the guesswork of what to wear, so that you can have fun. And isn't that what vacation is all about? Travel capsules are great for business trips, family trips, last minute trips, and vacations. Check out the Right Fit's website at therightfit.net for more information. <laughs> We're filming this um, the day, this is the day after your birthday. Yes. However, it's I was hoping you were out of town. You were just traveling, were you not? Yes. That's why you were not able to come. I wanted to get you on here so we could talk about you being nominated mm -hmm. for San Antonio mm -hmm. Currents uh, so Best Of. Yes. So we could um, we could talk about you losing and we could talk about you winning. Yeah, because of what happened. So I really can't believe that I... Right. Right. Oh, <laughs> so are you going to edit it? Yeah, yeah. You, you can yeah. edit it, right? I can't believe that I won. <laughs> Lost. You know, it was, uh, I think, fair. Uh -huh. I feel like it uh, went the way it was supposed to absolutely, go. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially if you won. <laughs> and if I lost, and definitely the way it was supposed to go. Year. Well, you know, the current, you know, is is, uh, is is drastically improving as, you know, our free publication in, in San Antonio. And the best of has always been bittersweet. They took uh, Comedian off for a few years, which I thought wasn't fair. Uh, but San Antonio, uh, you know, it represents every year, and they always change the format of how the voting goes. Because one year, I actually won third best actor in San Antonio, and that sounds really cool. I didn't act in that year, and I uh, lost to runner up Jesse Borrego. And number one best actor in San Antonio, you guessed it, Tommy Lee Jones. So it was one of the funniest things. And, and, and praise be to the San Antonio Current for the integrity of the answers that the people gave. But like, I, I made a post about it. You know, I was like, thanks so much for everyone who voted me for, you know, best actor. And I tagged all my, you know, actor friends that you know are consistently working that are getting like you know commercial work and doing really great things like you said there's so much talent in san antonio that it goes unnoticed uh but with now with the nominations you know they took the um you know i don't know there's people that don't care and I, and and you know and then there's people that you know sell votes and pass out you know flyers and candies and post up and vote for us, vote for us. And I'll do in the middle of that. I think you should at least let people know for for the current sake, like, hey, there's this this thing happening. But at the same time, they, they I did that for the nomination. And now that I got the nomination, you know, they say, you can vote daily. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not fair. Like, I'm not gonna have anybody vote daily for me. I put it out there to vote for me. So I got nominated and then I said, now here's your chance to vote for me now, and if I win, if you won, I mean, you won, or, or you I did. didn't. <laughs> so the results are what the results were. Yeah. You know, 
And boy, was that nice. <laughs> what are they coming out? Seriously, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when they're actually coming out, but they <laughs> so, do have until they have until, until the thirtieth. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which is uh, a week ago. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, I think the current is you know getting you know better. I, I remember we had one. We had one. Be- Comedian Gogo won best comedian once, and we went to the best of party. And you know, uh, we had friends that worked for the current and stuff like that. So this isn't anything against the current, but the party was 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 funny because we got in because we were winners. But all of the vendors, all of the people that were passing out cupcakes and serving barbecue, they didn't. They weren't the winners. They were just the sponsors. They oh. they paid for their booths. So we met up with the girl who won best cupcake, and we were just kind of. And she wasn't the one selling. Cupcakes. She wasn't. Well, not selling them, but that had giving right. them out. You know, because she wasn't this big cupcake store, and you would think that there'd be some support there. But the current's a free publication. They rely on their yeah. advertisers, and so the cupcake company that was second or third or maybe not even they place. Dominated. Yeah, exactly. They're the ones giving cupcakes oh. out now. Yeah, I know. And the poor girl who won best cupcake was like, I, I would have. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> they, uh, do they even have a party anymore? I think Travis I told I them they don't even do it. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. A mm-hmm. uh, buddy of mine is is uh, the new editor in chief, and so I don't know if, he, if he's up for that. We'll see. Yes. I'll go if they have a party, man. I mean, even if I mean you won, or you didn't. But even if you <laughs> didn't, you would go. Uh, right. But there's free stuff. What if yeah. that's a good swag bag? Yeah, swag bags are fun, but it's all full of uh, really expensive marketing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sell the stuff on eBay Yeah, it's all maybe? foreign print. Right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Shout out to foreign, foreign print. print. Thank you. <laughs> it worked with my budget. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think, I think the current's great. I think, you know, San Antonio gets a bad rap. You can't please the people here. It's either stuff's too lame or we're tryhards. It's like, pick one, man. Like, support us. Yeah. Support your local. Support your local artists, please. And next year, San Antonio Curtain have a home talk show category. It's the Richard Wilmore Show. <laughs>